his mouth, he says, all right, my car, wash it. I know where, what happens, right? He, he goes and he starts waxing. And the yogi says, wax on, wax on, wax on, wax on. So Daniel does it for a while, and his arm would hurt, and he's like, man, this is stupid. I want to do something else. I, I want to learn karate. The yogi says, okay, I teach you karate. And he takes him, he takes him to the forge. He says, now you strip the forge, and you wax on, and, you, and then you strip, and you pull, and you buff. He, he does all these things, right? And Daniel's like, man, this is retarded. I came to learn karate, and I'm doing your chores. I want to learn karate. And Yogi says, okay, I teach you karate. He takes him out to a fence. He's like, now paint it. Paint it. Paint up. Paint it. Paint up. Paint it. Finally, Daniel, he's had enough. He came to learn karate. He wants to defend himself against these heathens, like the robbers from the Good Samaritan story. He wants to defend himself against them. So he gets mad. He goes and he says some words I'm not going to repeat, but he says some foul stuff in the argument. He's like, I want to learn karate, and you're just having me do your chores. You're selfish, and you're using me, you're manipulative, and all these things. And like, I mean, he sounds like a psychologist when he tells him that, with those words he uses. And the guy, he says, watch this. He throws a punch, and Daniel, like, he paints real quick. Whoa! The guy, he starts doing this stuff, and Daniel, he's waxing on, waxing off, and he's, he's doing it, he's buffing, and he's painting. And the guy, says, see, you know karate. The whole time that he'd been doing these things, he was learning Christ. And ultimately, he was able to fulfill his purpose. Y'all remember this? Uh huh? He, he took care of those bullies, right? He found his purpose because he stayed faithful, waxed on and waxed off. He did what he was supposed to be doing. He says, I know Christ. And King David was faithful. He fought the lion and the bear. He was not scared. He knew, he knew that God was going to take care of him. He had that all home over there. God is the bear God is the smile put God no problems God's got this too I know karate he didn't know karate he just knew that God had it he had an all homo and now we're going to go back to my story tying it all in together I had an all homo moment when we all slowed and because I've been faithful in the small things I got to know Cliff Hall and the night that we lost Logan at the hospital, here I was finally getting back in mind to fulfill the vision that God had placed upon my heart. I was, I was heading down that road. I was finally getting back in mind what I was supposed to do. And then we lost that baby. And I'll tell you what, I probably said a lot of the things that Daniel said to the doctor. I was pretty ticked off. I was not happy about this because I prayed for And then, all of a sudden, when I very likely may have pulled away from God, there was a knock on the door at the hospital. I opened the door. And there was Cliff Hall. And I've told the story, and I can't tell it enough. When I saw Cliff, I saw God. I saw God. I didn't see the burning bush or anything like that. I didn't see his glory coming from the east, but I knew the presence of God had sent him. I knew he was connected to the current power of Christ. And I knew that God was there to remind me, here I am, here's my servant. Don't pull away. Let's get through this. We know that in all things you're working for, I'm working for your good, so trust me. Trust that you have a purpose. Don't pull away. Trust me. Had I not started getting back in line with the will of God, had I not started doing the small things where I thought were small, you know, slides, media presentation, building presentations to show sure I'm staying in town with the singer because the singer showing the lyrics at the screen. Had I not been doing that, I wouldn't have got to know Cliff. And had I not got to know Cliff, he could have impacted my life. So after all that happened, after all of that happened, I'm really wrestling with God for a little while. I wanted to understand it. I want to understand why I would take a baby. Why I would take a baby to pray on And you know what? I still don't have a real answer. I do have one answer, though. We know that in all things, God works for good those of us. And I trust Him for the first time ever in my life. And in trusting Him, as I'm wrestling with God, I start looking back at my life. And I start seeing how I got from A to B to way out west. Because I went way out west. God's going to show his glory from the east. I was way out west. I was as far from God as you can get. I was out there. I was like in California. 
were pretty liberal, you know. I was way out west. Wild, wild west. And then to make it back full circle, how does all this happen? I started looking at it. I started understanding it. It's all according to the will of God. See, he's been developing my character. He's been preparing me for something. And he had my back through it all. He brought me through the wilderness. Behind the walls of death. I was going to call it the Vietnam. He brought me through all that. Unscathed. Stronger. Stronger in him. Understanding who he was. I'm fully getting it right away. I know it took a little time. But he was showing me those things. He gave me time in his word. So, as he showed me all this, I realized that just like God did what he did to David, Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, I had their back. Got them where they needed to be. He can do the same for me. I decided, you know what? I'm going to trust him. So I met our former pastor, Pastor Scott. I met him. I said, hey, Scott, you need to know. I mean, it's important for you to know that there's a calling in my life. There's a calling in my life, and, and I want you to know this. And Scott told me some of the wisest words I've ever heard. And this is where we get to with calls we serve. Pastor Scott told me on that day, and it's our last point. Keep serving. And God will open the door. So that's what I did, you know. I kept serving. I, I kept doing the media. And then we went out to Toad Suck one day, and Scott was there himself. And he saw me interacting with people, and he was like, we got to get you from behind the computer and in the lobby, man. He's like, what are we doing? I mean, we, you that's not your gift set. We need people in media, but you need to be in the lobby. And as I look in here, I see a lot of people that I got to know in the lobby of a church fell in love with in the lobby of a church, connected to in the lobby of a church. And I just kept doing what I was supposed to be doing. And sometimes, you know what, even that seemed a little mundane as I was making sure the coffee was made and making sure we had the time and the loaves out. Sometimes it's like, man, I want to deal with people and I want to build relationships with people and I want to minister to people. Sometimes that didn't, that didn't seem important, you know, the little tie on loaves. It didn't seem important to me. But I kept doing it anyways because that's what God had put in front of me. You know, I became the guest services director. And I kept plugging along. And then finally Scott said, Derek, let's send you to pastoral training. You, you need to go to pastoral training. So I went to pastoral training. And as you all know, earlier this year I was ordained. That's because when I really gave it to him, I started being faithful in the small things. And in Matthew chapter 25, 21, it says, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So this is what I want to tell you. I want you to keep painting. I want you to keep waxing. I want you to keep buffing. I want you to keep working on your crane kit. I want you to keep sliding mats. I want you to keep stacking chairs. I want you to keep hanging drywall. I want you to keep cooking meals because ultimately God is going to take you to the place that he's promised you're going to go because he has a plan and he has a purpose. Because had I not told Scott what was going on and had Scott not said you need to go through pastoral training, when the, when the doors of that church closed, I would not have been prepared to start sold out church. But I stayed faithful and I did what I was supposed to do. And every step along the way, those cards the coffee and making sure people were where they were supposed to be and teaching people to love on everybody that came to the door was all preparing me for when we get this because man I, let me tell you what there's a lot more now than just making sure cars are in place there's a lot of things to keep my eyes on Chris said well, I go, what am I responsible for everything man that's right now, I give it all a lot of the way to y'all I trust y'all man I've got to, it, it, it comes down to me and I'm, one day I will stand before God and give an account of everything that we do here at Soledad Church I will answer for every decision that we've made together. It's a big responsibility. And had I not been doing those small things, there is no way in heck that I would have been prayed up, studied up, and knowing even just a little bit how to do what we're doing right now. But I was faithful. And God kept showing up. And now, now that we're here, now that I'm 30 years old, and we're here, I'm seeing God show up in ways like I never even dreamed of. Never even dreamed. Man, this week, the stuff that y'all did, I love y'all. I love y'all.
love y'all. Because I'm starting to see again why we had church and why we fellowship together, man. And it is awesome seeing what y'all are doing. Stepping out there saying, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Man, I'm loving it. It's not a routine no more, is it? Man, we're seeing God show up and we're experiencing a movement of God. And you know what? Greater things are yet to come. We're just getting warmed up. We just turned on the burner. The grease ain't even hot yet. And I'm loving it. I'm loving seeing what y'all are doing. And I cannot thank y'all enough for saying, here I am, Lord. Use me. Guys, if you keep serving, God's going to open that door. Each and every one of you has a destiny and a purpose. God has a plan in your life. That's right. And we've talked about you've been called to care. You've been called to be generous. And you've been called to serve. And if you will keep doing these things, if you will keep doing them, you will reach your potential in Jesus Christ. You will find your identity in Jesus Christ. And the world will be changed every day because you will be a connector to the current of the power of Christ. You will make Jesus known in the lost world. And we will see lives change. And let me tell you, on the day that you walk through those gates, the first person that comes up to you, the first person, and I know this because I've had people come to me in a church and say, Derek, I stuck around because you've been a lot of my life. And man, that meant the world to me. So the first time when I walk through those gates, the first time someone comes up to me and they say, Derek, I'm here because you showed me Christ. I ain't going to know what to think. And the first time that, that happens when you go through those gates, when you get home, and someone tells you, I'm here because you showed me Christ, because you love me like Christ. Man, think of that day. Think of that day. And keep on plugging along. Keep on plugging along. Because it's going to get you. It's going to get you. Now, I want to bow our heads and then we're going to go to a special part in this service today. I, I, got, I got something for everybody today. I put on Facebook and something big is coming. First, first, I just want to pray out the main point for us. Father, we come before you today, Lord. Father, I'm just grateful for you and your timing and the way you work things out. I can. I can remember a few weeks ago, Chris and I talking. I'm about what we were going to preach on for the next few weeks. Lord, this is what you gave us. And now seeing it week after week, we haven't just been preaching, but, but Lord, you've been doing it, empowering people through your Holy Spirit to fulfill everything we've been preaching. Father, I just thank you for that, to be able to experience you like this and see you working in people's lives. I thank you for the life change that we see. And Father, today I just pray that everyone will leave here knowing that they have a purpose. That you have a plan for them. You have a mission for them. They have a job to be done. I hope they understand, Father, that when they came to know you, when they gave their life to you, that they signed a full-time ministry agreement on that day. Father, let them leave here knowing we are always servants. And I pray that they will continue to serve and do it cheerfully. Father, thank you for showing me what your people can do when they come together. Thank you for being a part of Sold Out Church. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Father, I pray that as, as we depart today, that you'll be with them in everything that they do. That they'll be reminded of these words. And when they get to work tomorrow, they go to fire up that computer, Father. I pray that even in that, they'll do it as a good and unto you. That they will look for ways to care, and to be generous, and to serve. I pray that they will remain connected to your country. I would ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before we depart from here today, um, I did say something big was coming. And we, we've done a lot of talking. The lead team has done a lot of talking on this. We, we, we all put this into it. We all came to a place, and you know, I was talking about Cliff Holland all ago. And everyone's going to need to thank Cliff because we knew that the logo we were using, we knew that it was cool. It was cool. But we put
put it together and none of us are artists. You know, that logo right there, none, none of us are artists. We kind of did that in Microsoft Paint, Microsoft Word. And, I mean, it looks okay, you know, it, it's a good thing. But your logo is the first thing people see. In a few seconds, they have an idea of who you are based on that logo. And I wanted something in the logo that showed Christ and made a powerful statement about Christ. And there was kind of a God story how we all came together and we said, you know, we, let's, maybe we need to pay for a logo. And I said, but I feel like if God is really in sold out church, we shouldn't have to spend any money on a logo. Someone will donate that design. And that very night, Cliff called me and said, hey, I just want you to know I haven't forgotten about the logo. I'm going to send you some work ups this week. We set a deadline for a week was what we had. So we were probably going to pay for one. And I didn't feel right about paying for it. And God showed up even in our logo because I want God in our logo. So, Chris, if you could if you could give us the new sold-out logo, our permanent logo, sold-out church, to make Jesus known to a hurting world and develop sold-out followers of him. And I love this thing because, see, it's kind of bright here right now. You can't see the full effect. But that cross, that cross is illuminating light. And we know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And that cross is a representative of him. He lights up the darkness around him. And we know that we do not have to fear condemnation. We know that we do not have to fear judgment. We know that we are made whole and pure because we are under the blood of Christ. And that paint stripe around it symbolic of the blood of the Passover lamb. The blood of Christ is protecting us. It's encircling around us. And I'm so thankful that God has showed up and said, here you go. So now what we plan on doing is I want people to write down on something, put it on your connection card, whatever. If you're interested in us getting shirts or hats or anything like that, um, we've got a logo now. And it's time to really start making people known. We're making us known in Conway, in Greenbrier. In it's time to start making a push. Because we talked about we want to make Jesus known to a hurting world. And we're seeing a lot of stuff happen here at Sold Out Church. Aren't y'all ready to share that with the world? That's right. I said, aren't you ready to share what we're seeing at Sold Out Church out in the world? Woo! And you better be because that's what we're going to do. We are going to show Jesus to some people. And now we got something to recognize. They'll say, man, that's that crazy group of people with that crazy nutty pastor over at Sold Out Church. So if you're interested in anything like that, has anything, put it down. We're not taking up any money right now. We're going to figure out who all wants them, how much cost they're going to be. Just put it down. Um, I'm going to launch all of this stuff tonight. We're going to launch it on Facebook, on Twitter, on the website. Uh, we're going to start getting this thing going. Guys, we're getting more and more legit constantly. God just keeps showing up and keeps giving us everything we need. All according to his time. Just like he's done in my life and just like he wants to do in your life. So, trust in him this week and he's going to show up. He's going to present everything you need. As long as you stay faithful. You stay faithful. We didn't have to spend any money. You knew God would provide. He took care of him. That's what he's going to do in your life. Just trust him. Martin Smith, have a great week.